Welcome to Shale's Kitchen, home of good food and good memories. One of my favorite childhood memories is when Daddy used to rent a beach house right on the beach and we would stay there for the summer for two, three weeks and it was wonderful. And at night, we would go crab hunting. Listen, we never caught anything, but it sure was fun. And um, on our last trip home to Trinidad, we were just out sightseeing with my Uncle Edison. He was just driving us around and we saw these young boys. They had their blue crabs hanging. They had them all strung together and they were by the side of the road selling their blue crabs. Well, we pulled over immediately and bought a couple, you know, uh, a dozen of those crabs. And listen, they escaped in the trunk of the car. And when we got home, we had to try to find all the crabs because some were missing. That was funny. So here's what's cooking in Shale's Kitchen today. Curry Blue Crab. Curry crab with a hot Jamaican curry and coconut milk. Good with a cold carrot. Make sure your crabs are totally alive when you buy them. The first thing that we have to do is to prep our crabs before cleaning and seasoning. So here I have a nice large pot and you, you want to make sure your pot is large enough to hold all your crabs. And it's filled with water and I'm bringing this to a rapid boil. It's safest to handle your live crabs with tongs. Oh my goodness. So now all the crabs are immersed in the boiling water. You just want it to boil for a couple minutes and then take it off the heat. Make sure and pour off the boiling water and let your crabs cool down before cleaning. I noticed that some of the crabs had a little dirt on the shells so what I did was I just soaked them in some water to loosen up that dirt and that mud and now I'm just going to use a vegetable brush to just kind of like scrub all around the crab. Get all that, any kind of residue off of there. You want it to be nice and clean. Be sure that you get not only the back, you know, like the top of the crab, but you also want to get all the bottom of it Oh, oh, just lost one of those claws and get all between the legs as well where the residue might have settled. Now that the crabs are all nice and clean, we're going to go to the next step, which is taking the backs off. So what I usually do is I just like lift this portion up, pull it back, and then pull the back away from the rest of the crab. So see these like little gill like things? You're going to want to remove those, you know, just uh, cut all of those off. But see this right here? We call this crab fat in Trinidad and we eat that and it is delicious. I'm going to add that whatever is there in my curry crab because it's going to give it a nice delicious rich flavor. If you are a little squeamish about that you don't have to do it but I just want to let you know it's really great if you use it. For the last step of the cleaning process I cut all the crabs in half and um, not to worry if you have like some of the legs or claws fall off that happens you know it's just like a natural process but don't don't worry about it. And then I just squeezed a little lime juice on that, on the crab and left it for about a couple minutes and then rinsed it thoroughly in a cool running water. And like I said, I was, I'm going to reserve my crab fat because I'm going to add that to the crab while it's cooking with the curry. Now it's time to season our crab and I'm going to add a little bit of kosher salt and some coarse ground black pepper. And I'm also going to add this green seasoning mix, about a third cup, which is um, 
good enough for like the three blue crabs that we have. This is an amazing blend. My mommy makes this with a blend of a whole bunch of different fresh herbs and garlic as well and, um, and pimentos. And it keeps in the refrigerator or the freezer. It'll keep in the freezer for like a few months. So she usually makes like a real big batch of this and then we keep it and we use it for everything for seasoning. It's great. Then we're just going to stir everything together. And you're going to want to, um, if you don't have a lot of time, you can just leave this for about half an hour or an hour and let it sit for a while. But if you do have the time, you can cover it with plastic wrap one, or put it in an airtight container and store it in the refrigerator overnight until you're ready to cook. Sorry, I just caught myself and I said three crabs we are seasoning. It's actually six blue crabs cut in halves. If you've refrigerated your crabs overnight, you want to bring them to close to room temperature before cooking. So the next thing that I'm going to do, like 30 minutes before you're ready to cook, you're going to add your curry. This is some hot Jamaican curry, which I absolutely love because it's so easy to use. And I use it for a lot of seafood and, and, and um, meat, all different kinds of meat and poultry as well. And it is a wonderful condiment. So I sprinkle the three tablespoons of curry all over the crabs. And then I'm going to mix it like really, really well. You want to coat all the crabs in your curry. And then once you've coated everything, to, then you're going to just let your crabs rest for another 30 minutes or so. And then you will be ready to cook your curry crab. I think our crabs are ready for the pot. So I like to cook my seafood in a large pot with a nice wide base because I find that's ideal and it's great for the curry crab too because that way I can have the seafood or whatever I'm cooking in a single layer and I don't need to crowd anything. And just check out this wonderful cooking spoon that my sister-in-law Farah got me when we were recently on vacation. We got it at the flea market in Hollywood Beach, Florida. I love this. So you need a nice big pot spoon to cook your curry crab. So I've heated up my pot on high heat and I have a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. So I'm going to pour that into the bottom of the pot. And then I'm going to add my two tablespoons of butter which I've sliced a little bit because I want that butter to melt nicely into the extra virgin olive oil and all those flavors, delicious flavors blending together. Love that sizzling and the smell, that aroma of the extra virgin olive oil with the butter. So I've reduced my heat to medium high and now I am going to add my garlic. I'm going to stir that garlic around, get it nice and sauteed in that wonderful extra virgin olive oil and butter. And now I have some chopped scallions. This is about four scallions chopped here. I'm going to add to this. So you know, recently I didn't even know this, my sister-in-law developed an allergy to regular onions. And she requested that I make some curry crab for her with um, using green onions. So that's what I'm doing. I tried it and I made it for her and it turned out really good. So that's an option for people who may have somehow developed allergies to, um, to regular onions. So we're just going to saute this for about another minute or two. And now it's time to add our crab. So I'm going to put in a 
good stir. And I'm going to fry this down for probably, you know, two to three minutes, maybe more if it needs it. But we just want to get that um, curry fried up a little bit before we add any liquids to the pot. So the curry crab has dried down a bit, so I'm going to add a little water to the pot. Now that I've added more water to the pot, I'm going to add our crab fat that I had reserved. You know, that really yummy stuff that comes in, in the back of the crab. I'm adding that and I'm going to give it a good stir. Get all those flavors blended together. Crab is cooked another five minutes, so now I am going to pour in our coconut milk. This is about a half cup of coconut milk. Stir that in. Again, we want to get all those nice flavors blended, and you can see how creamy it's getting already. So after adding the coconut milk, I am going to let this cook again for another five minutes and then I'm going to check it. A good thing to remember is that seafood cooks really quickly so you don't want to overcook it. This is going to cook within 10 to 15 minutes. So I tasted the curry sauce and it is divine. It's got everything that I love about a good curry. The perfect blend of Indian spices creating that rich curry flavor. And then the creaminess from adding the coconut milk, the perfect level of spiciness, and the blue crab still shine through. So I'm ready for my curry crab feast. I've got my claw crushers, so crackers, <laughs> and uh, I ran out of carrot, but I have the next best thing, an ice cold calique. Compliments of my friends in the Bahamas. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed today's episode as much as I did. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Shales Kitchen, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. Thank you so much for spending your time with me, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Shales Kitchen. Home of good food and good memories.